All right, everybody, welcome to Studio B. I am your host, Pastor MDH. Thank you so very much for joining us here on the set today. Remember, wherever you're watching us from, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, like, comment, follow, subscribe, all of those good, wonderful algorithms that make us move up the charts. We desperately appreciate all of your help and your support uh, for those who have been with us uh, for the last two and a half years. So thank you. Hey, today uh, we're going to have a quick one, 15, 20 minutes. So y'all tune in because we're going to be hitting some hot points. Uh, we're going to be in Psalm 73, and I want to I want to kind of share with you uh, some of the things that the Bible says. And, 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 and let me just share this. I was uh, as I was on my way down to the studio today, I was thinking about uh, when people say that the Bible is not relevant, that the Bible is archaic, that, you know, the stuff that happened in the Bible back in them days don't apply to us here in our days like this. It is so, you know, technologically deplete from where we are today. Uh, but man, let me tell you, the Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will remain forever. Ecclesiastes chapter number three says that there is nothing new under the sun. And one of the things that has been the Achilles heel of humanity is that we have put people on pedestals that they have not deserved to be upon. Uh, when your heroes fall, when you lift a man or a woman too high up, when they come crashing down, the fall is great. And so the Bible says that's why you trust not in horses and chariots, but you trust in the living God to um, trust in him with all of your heart, your mind and your soul. And he will direct your path. But when we elevate people to an improper position, they are absolutely prone to disappoint us. You know what's been in the news. I, I, you're a guy, um, Sean Puffy Combs and the video that just resurfaced. And um, we've been talking a lot about, you know, how our culture influences our lives. And I'm talking in specifics to the African-American community, how we value people who have shown us time and time again that their character is not worthy of the respect that we so-called do them. Um, but our heroes are people that typically are not valued to be heroes. Um, we are missing the Martin Luther Kings, the Mega Evers and the Malcolm X's and those in the past who wasn't perfect by any means, but stood for something greater than themselves. But now what we have done is we have elevated people to the heights of popularity. We have put them up on the pedestals of life. And then when they come crashing down, all people are surprised. But I want to show you something in Psalm 73 to show you that the Bible is not new to this. It's true to this. The Bible has been talking about stuff like this for eons upon eons. And in Psalm 73, um, this is the Psalm of Asap. And it is a very, very practical uh, hit home every day on Main Street type of psalm. Uh, this brother starts off in verse number one. It says, truly, God is good to Israel, to such who are impure in heart. And then he says in verse number two, but as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped for I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Now, this is my man, Asap. Asap has several Psalms uh, within the divisions of Psalms and even have a couple of Proverbs that are attributed to his name. And he says here that I envied the wicked because I saw their prosperity. Uh, now, many out there in TV land and YouTube land and Facebook land and Instagram land will never dare admit that indelible truth that it sometimes You've asked God this question, why? God, I'm doing A, B, C, and D. I'm trying to live right. I'm trying to think right. I'm trying to do right. I'm trying to talk right. And here it is, this guy who ain't trying to do none of that seems to be living high on the hog. They seem as though everything is fine. And so ASAP here is looking at his spiritual life and what he figures is not giving him a return and then looking at the envious who want nothing to do with God and their life is seemingly prospering. He says in verse number four, for there are no pains in death, but their strength is firm 
They are not in trouble like other men, nor are they plagued like other men. They wear pride as a necklace and violence covers them like a garment. So you've seen in the news all of this stuff with Sean Puffy Combs, uh, one of the um, entertainers that black America has lifted to the heights of popularity um, and declared him to be a music mobile, a mogul. Uh, we have lifted him up in all of these things uh, associated with him and the record companies that he has had and the records that he has produced. Well, in these last couple of weeks, you've seen these videos surface. And these videos are nothing new. These videos are nothing new to the industry in which he's in, but it's nothing new to the world in which we live. Um, when pride becomes your God, you live as though you are untouchable. You live as though nobody can tell you anything. And ASAP says here that they wear pride like a necklace boastful who can do anything about it yeah i'm doing wrong yeah i'm doing this yeah i'm doing that but who can say anything about it who can do anything about what i am doing so they wear pride as a necklace in verse number seven their eyes bulge with abundance they have more than their hearts could ever wish these are the wicked now remember, ASAP is comparing the wicked to the righteous and he is looking at the wicked and saying to God, man, what's going on? What's going on with this? When you have Christians who are trying to do right, live right, speak right, and trying to be right before God, who can barely make the ends meet. They got more month than they got money. Somebody ought to talk back to me out there. When you got bills that are piling up and you don't know how those bills are going to be paid yet, you are faithfully trying to follow and serve the Lord. Then on the other hand, you look around and see people that have no affiliation with anything religious, especially anything of Christ. And it looks like they have more than their hearts could ever wish. They scoff verse number eight and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouths against heaven and their tongues walk through earth. Matter of fact, they not only not serve God, but they willingly disdain God. You've seen this before on the award shows, a uh, music that is antithetical to the gospel of Christ. And yet the artists that do the music have the audacity to stand on the stage and receive their award and thank God for a ranch, a raunchy and, 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 and inappropriate song. They not only don't serve God, but they snub their nose at God. And ASAP is saying, yet they're still prospering. Therefore, the people return here and the cups of water are drained by them. And they say, how does God know? And is there any knowledge of the most high? If you're honest, and I mean really honest, um, you, you can sometimes get in a funk to where you feel life is not fair. Um, life is not fair. Life is not fair. What you may be going through, what you see somebody else going through, you sometimes figure that life is not fair. Life has dealt you a bad hand. If you're honest, if you're honest, you can say that at some point in time in your life, you've looked at life and its circumstances and the hands that have been dealt and said, my hand ain't fair. Why do I have to live like this? Why does this keep happening to me? This is what ASAP is saying. ASAP is saying in verse number 11 is their knowledge of the most high. Here we are Christians. And I often say this to Christians. We are people that are going against the current. It would be so much easier in our Christian lives to go along, to get along. It would be so much easier to go along, to get along, just to leave everything by the wayside and just go with the stream of the world. It will be so much easier, but because we don't, we can't uh, because we are under mandate not to be of this world. It is difficult for those of us who claim an affiliation with Christ. And ASAP says the people on the other side of this thumb their nose at God all day and seemingly 
with no consequences. Behold, these are the ungodly who are always at ease. They increase in riches. Surely, verse number 13 says, I've cleansed my heart in vain. I want you to remember this is Asap, a man who God used to write this particular song. As he is looking at his life, trying to be right with God and looking at the wicked, he is confused and he contemplates right now. He says, man, look at these guys. These guys not only don't want to know you, God, they don't want to have anything to do with you. But yet look at their lives on the outside. That is look at how they're living on the outside. That is they seemingly have no problems. But God, why can't I find two nickels to rub together? Why do I have to live paycheck to paycheck? Why are some of my ends not meeting? Why is my body racking in pain? Why can't I put food on the table for my children? And I'm trusting you with all of my heart, my mind and my soul. ASAP saying, listen, as I look at this life, it doesn't seem fair. Have I cleansed my heart in vain? Have I washed my hands in innocence? For all day long, I've been plagued and chastened every morning. If I had said I will speak of this, behold, I would have been untrue to the generation of your children. So ASAP is looking over his life and it's not matching up. And I want you to hear something. And this is where this is where even when we see a man fall, we don't laugh. We learn. Anytime you see a man topple from grace, topple from the heights of wherever, don't laugh, learn. Figure out how he fell, why he fell, and then learn not to do that. We never laugh at somebody when they come falling down off of the mountaintop. We learn about how they fell off of the mountaintop as not to repeat these same actions. And so ASAP's here, ASAP here is talking about those of us who serve God. And though we think that when we come down that road, down that aisle to give our heart to Christ, that God lays out the yellow brick road and say, hey, for you, because you trusted me, no more problems for you. For the rest of your days, you got life on the easy street. And it just doesn't happen like that. He says, when I thought about how to understand this, it was too painful for me. Now watch this in verse number 17. Verse number 17 says, until I went into the sanctuary of God. And this is why I encourage you not to lift people to the heights of popularity. This is where I tell you never to form an idol that is a person, never to look so high at a person to where you begin to idolize that person because that person is simply just a person. ASAP says here that when I was looking at how they live life and how everything seems to be easy and they don't have problems like everybody else, they flaunt their pride like necklaces. They walk in absolute disobedience to God. When I look at that and then begin to say life is unfair, he said it wasn't until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. Uh, it's hard for you to understand this, even as I say it right now. Uh, we have a much better life on this side than do those who don't know Christ. I know it may not seem like it. I know it may not seem like it's saying. I, I know it may seem like life is against you and that the hand that you have been dealt is unfair. I get that and we completely understand. I understand how you can look at your life and look at somebody else's life and start to do the whole comparison thing. I understand it. But the Bible tells us that we ought to walk by faith and not by sight. Now, what does that mean? That means that we still got bills that may be piling up on the table. We still may have a doctor's report that is not favorable to us. We still may have family members that are not doing what we want them to do. There still may be issues as you are serving God. However, I want you to remember that as ASAP went into the sanctuary of God, man, he understood their end. Surely they set them on slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. As I started off with Sean Puffy Combs and all that he is going through and at the height of his music mogul empire to which a man that is easily worth a little over a billion dollars who's lived the majority of his life in opulence 
who's lived the majority of his life doing whatever he want to whoever he want, whenever he wanted to do it, is now at a place to where he is caught in the crosshairs of judgment. And I want you to remember that when you live on this place, when you live up here and snub your nose in the eyes of God, in the face of God, God ultimately will have the last laugh. He says that you've set them on slippery places. You've cast them down to destruction and you've brought them to desolation as in a moment. He said one minute they're on top of the world. The next minute they are sliding down. That's just how fast fortunes may change. And you ought to understand that when you are looking at the wicked. So the Bible tells us to not envy the wicked, though we may get into a pattern of looking at this and looking at that and feeling a certain type of way about it. God tells us that, listen, you are my child. I've given you the Holy Spirit. I have a plan and a purpose for you. Trust me, don't get so enamored with this world that you fall in love with it. Because all those who snub their nose in the face of an almighty God, he who laughs last, laughs the loudest. As you see your own life, I, I warn you, I admonish you, dear saint, never to put a person in a position that they do not deserve to be in. There is one person that is deserved to be worshiped, uh, one person that is deserved to be honored above all, and that is God himself. That is God who sits up on the throne. And when we elevate people to an unhealthy level, that person, that man, that woman, will surely fall from the position that we have placed them in. ASAP said here, listen, I'm looking at the wicked. I, I see it don't make sense until I opened my spiritual eyes and saw their end. I will tell you that in all that I have seen um, with this gentleman who is now in the public square, this is a society that we have created. This is nothing new, Ecclesiastes chapter number three. We've known this behavior before and people have tolerated. Uh, but you give people a pass when evil is presented right before your eyes. ASAP said in verse number 17, until I went into the sanctuary of God, I understood their end. What are we saying here as we uh, come to a close? Listen, um, life is something. Life be life in y'all. Life be life in. Like life is life. And you're not going to be able to get through life without life flexing on you. Without life trying to show you who's in control. You could be doing the best that you are trying to do and life is still going to be life. You could be living right, doing right, in the right place at the right time with the right people that you're supposed to be with and life will still start lifing. And if I had any encouragement to the people of God who are trying to do right in the midst of all of this wrong, but then get discouraged because life is not turning out the way that we think it should. I want to encourage you that we have been redeemed from this evil world, though we still have to live in this evil world. I want you to remember that we have been redeemed from this evil world, even though we have to live in this evil world. So saints, I want you to be encouraged. Uh, don't envy the wicked. Uh, don't live in the moment where you're questioning everything that is good and everything that is fair and not fair. Trust God. Trust God. The enemies of God, those who thumb their nose at the almighty God, will be dealt with by God. And I thank God that we have been covered by the blood of his precious son, Jesus. Everybody, I want to thank you. Listen, be on the lookout. Man, there's new intros coming, new podcasts coming, new sets coming. We're getting ready to completely redesign the Studio B uh, set. We'll have three different sets all in one studio. 
be looking out for. There's gonna be several things coming down the pike. I'm extremely excited about it. So you make sure that you look right down here at the bottom somewhere, somewhere there is a like, there is a comment, and then there is a subscribe. And then right there next to the subscribe, there should be like a little bell. If you click on that bell, you're gonna be notified every time we drop a new podcast. Uh, we are quickly approaching 50,000 K subscribers and man, we're thankful for that. Uh, but I wanna thank you for staying with us uh, as long as you have. Remember everybody, if you are informed, you are empowered. So be informed, be empowered. Studio B. We'll see you next time.